Hey everybody, it's Matt Brown. We're going to take a look at Aeroplane by the Chili Peppers in this one. So let's start with the intro. Here's how it goes. <laughs> Okay, so let's talk about all these chords here. The first one I'm going to call a uh, C7 with uh, a sus4 in it. So um, this is played on your highest five strings and the fret numbers are 3, 3, 3, and 6. So you're basically replacing the E notes in a C7 chord with F notes, giving you a sus4 chord. The next chord... Uh, I'm going to call that a C9 without the third. That would be 3, 5, 3, 3, 3. The next one, that would be a C13 sus4. So that's 3, 3, 3, 3, 5. And then what he does is he puts the pinky down at the end of that measure. The following chord is just a C. So inner four strings, three, five, five, five. Um, then you're gonna go back to this shape. So that's three, 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 six. So uh, another C13 sus four. And then bring the, the ring finger down to change the note on the first string. And then basically your pinky is gonna go on to the second string. So, uh, sorry. And then the next chord, that's a C sus2, so that's 3, 5, 5, 3, 3. That's a C9 sus4, so inner four strings, 3, 3, 3, 3. And then it ends with a C. So I'll play this again, it sounds like this. Okay, so now we're into uh, the next part of this song. And live, uh, he he played this part with some gain and overdrive. On uh, the record, record, it's it's fairly clean-ish. Um, so worthy to note, and in, in, as far as the tone goes. All right, so the next riff is real simple, just two chords. <laughs> Alright, so that's all it is. So uh, basically what you have is a C7 sus4. Um, that'll be on strings 4, 3, and 2. And the frets are 10, 10, 11. And then the next chord it goes to, it resolves to uh, a C7. So that's on strings 4, 3, 2. And the notes are 10, 9, 11. So... Yeah, and you're just uh, strumming 16th notes consistently over and over again. All right, so let's check out the next part. All right, so the, the next part that comes in um, is a wah part. So I'm going to play it with the wah so you can get the vibe of what's going on, and then I'll uh, break it down slowly and play it without the wah so you can hear and see what I'm doing. Okay, so here we go. <laughs> Alright, so here it is slowly without the wall. One, two, three, four. So this is using a funk technique that uh, usually most people refer to as popping. And what it is, is you're combining 
Um, just, you know, you typically pentatonic kind of single note action, rhythmic playing though, not like your typical lead playing. And combining it with these like left-handed muted notes. So that's all that's going on. This is all just played out of your G minor pentatonic scale, uh, mainly out of the type position, and then the ending um, idea slides up into the next pentatonic pattern over. So again, slowly, one, two, three, E, and a four, E. check out uh, the verse part that comes in next. So the verse part sounds like this. So what you're doing here is uh, just two string shell voicings as they're called, the uh, sevenths and thirds of the chords. So G minor seven, this is, uh, let's see, 18, 18 on your high two strings and then going to a C7 shell, so that is 17 and 18. And, and you can add some fills to this at the end of phrases where the, the vocals, you know, are absent, like... So that's, if you know, you check out some live versions, you might hear Dave Navarro play, something like that. So he's just doing a little unison bend there. Um, or you could do some sort of pentatonic thing, like... You know, whatever. Something, something like that will get the job done and, and, and make it a little more interesting. All right, so let's, let's move on. So uh, what happens is you have a, a chorus next, and uh, out of the end of the chorus, uh, kind of like the last one, you have this uh, like lead idea that comes in. Um, this one I like to play with a little bit of delay. Um, and it's 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 almost exclusively played on the uh, third string, so it's a very horizontal type deal. Um, and this is this is played out of the uh, the G Dorian mode. So here's how this sounds. <laughs> Okay, so I'll do this a little bit slower. One, two, ready, go. So you can see I'm mainly just sliding my finger along the first string. And then the, the ideas become a little bit faster, so you have to use multiple fingers. So, yeah, uh, pretty, pretty neat playing. It's very textural and has kind of almost like a sitar kind of sound since you're just like sliding along one string for the most part. All right, let's move on. So what happens now is you have another verse, and um, this is played the same, and uh, in the background there's some like little just pentatonic dabbling that he's playing with a, a phase shifter, so I don't even think it's really worth teaching to you because nobody's going to want to learn it. <laughs> so, alright, anyway, um, what happens is another chorus, and then uh, this chorus, instead of leading into like a little another solo we figure thing, um, it goes into this clean bridge part, so let's talk about that. It's really worth teaching to you because nobody's going to want to learn it. <laughs> so, all right. Anyway, um, what happens is another chorus. And then uh, this chorus, instead of leading into like a little another solo we figure thing, um, it goes into this clean bridge part. So let's talk about that. <laughs> bridge. 
Um, the first chord that we're going to do uh, is it's a B flat chord with uh, an F in the bass. So that's on strings 4, 3, and 2, uh, frets 3, 3, 6. Which just goes down to a B flat slash F, so that's 3, 3, 3. So. And then we're going to put the third finger down, which, uh, I mean, kind of gives you like an F6 kind of a sound. Um, so that's three, five, three. The next measure you're taking that down just to our B flat slash F. And then um, in the second half of the measure, we're going to hammer on the third finger. So that's five, three, three, making this a G minor chord. So all together again. So that happens a bunch of times. Uh, the last time uh, before going to a chorus though, um, there's just like this, which is, you know, you're just playing on the eighth notes uh, to give a real syncopated type deal. Uh, okay, um, over top of that, there's a guitar that's just playing some real sparse chords with wah, like... So just where the chords change, basically. Like that. Alright, um, then we have chorus, we have Flea's awesome bass solo, and then we have the guitar solo at the end to talk about. So let's check out that solo. So for the solo that, uh, the or the rhythm part underneath the solo, let's talk about that first. Um, so these are also the ideas that um, Flea is implying with his bass lines too. So the overall sound of the chord progression going on is a G minor 7 to a C9. So the G minor 7, that's 3, uh, your fifth string's meted, then 3, 3, 3. Your C9. That is three, two, three, three, three. So the rhythm that's played is a real punchy kind of eighth note thing like that. Type of groove that, that repeats over and over again. So I will play the solo for you and then uh, I'll break it down. Okay, so now I'll do the, the solo slower without the wah so you can see and hear a little bit better what's going on.
So most of what he's doing is all G minor pentatonic based. There are a few Dorian notes that slip in, or you could think of it as him adding some of the notes from the G major pentatonic, whatever. Same kind of idea. Um, some of the little tricks he does that uh, are, are kind of tough to explain. Like at the beginning, there's this thing where he does like, he bends the string, and then he's, he's doing vibrato on it and continuing to pick it while the bend releases. Kind of, you know, that kind of a sound effect type thing. Uh, okay, so that's that's one thing that he, he does. Um, uh, a sequence that he always does, it's, uh, I'm guessing he got it from the Good Times, Bad Times solo, Jimmy Page, is this kind of pentatonic sequence. So that shows up in a lot of his solos. So definitely something worth mentioning. Um, and, you know, the wah really kind of controls the tone and the texture. So, um, you know, spend a dip, uh, decent amount of time just playing with your wah and getting the, the, the kind of tone that you want out of uh, your rig. All right, so um, if you want the tabs for this song, just email me. I am Matt Brown, and I've got plenty more lessons coming. All right, thanks a lot.